currently uh, what's known as a senior enlisted advisor to the Chiefs of Staff Committee, which is a very long title for essentially the highest ranking non-commissioned officer um, that advises the Chiefs of Staff uh, within Defence. Operation Granby was my first deployment. Um, I was, I think I just turned 18 years old. Um, I just arrived in Münster um, in Germany. It was my first posting with the Grenadier Guards uh, and my first operational deployment. And it was like no other operational deployment I went on because this was going to war at scale. My parents weren't necessarily that keen on the idea, but I wanted to make my family proud, I wanted to serve my country um, and I wanted to make a difference um, in any way that I could and it was the best decision I have ever made and I've had the most amazing career as a result um, of joining. While there's still the possibility of further diplomatic moves, the probability of a major land offensive is again at the top of the war agenda. And the Pentagon has sent a clear message to the White House, we're all ready to go, just give us the order. And I knew very little about what I was going into. You know, all I knew was I was going to war. And I knew what part of the world I was going to, but that was about it. Because as an 18 year old lad that had been in for just short of a year, I had no experience in that part of the world. So I was a, a rifleman because uh, I was only 18 years old. Um, I hadn't done any career courses or anything like that at that point. Uh, I was quite proud to be in that position and to be in that role. I'm still in touch with uh, some of the people I serve with, uh, some of the guys that I joined the army with, I'm still in touch with and they're on the same operation, some of the people that are in my vehicle at that time. And I think as time goes on and the years pass, actually it connects you even more, more so than it did in the, in the years that soon followed after the operation. We're, we're probably more in touch now, which is nice. And uh, I've got a picture from the first Gulf War that I put up in, in every place of work that I've had subsequently because it just reminds me of where I came from and where it all started and I'm really proud of that picture and I take it everywhere. I think my biggest challenge was when we finally got into the ground campaign and we knew we were going to go into combat and we were given orders and we were going to deploy um, that evening. For me, uh, the realisation that we were going to go into battle, I was going to get out of the back of a warrior fighting vehicle and there was a very good chance that I wasn't going to see the following morning. I, I never struggled with finding the courage. Um, the adrenaline and the excitement is something you never experience unless you've done it for real. Um, and luckily, you know, we did what we did and uh, I got to see the following day and then subsequent years thereafter. So. Uh, I'm just grateful for the experience. My second tour of Iraq came much later. I was actually a newly promoted company sergeant major then. And to go back there, it was, I mean, it's a completely different experience. Um, Iraq at that stage was were probably three years after the second Gulf War. It was a great experience to get back out there, particularly in the role that I was in. But I think my proudest moment came as a complete surprise and that was receiving an OBE um, from Prince William in Buckingham Palace, something I had no idea was coming and uh, an immensely proud moment for me uh, and my family. So Op Granby taught me a lot uh, about life, it taught me a lot about friendships, it taught me a lot about values, uh, it taught me a, yeah, a lot about life in general. I've got to say, I, I probably reflect on that operation uh, just as much, if not more, than the others that I've deployed, and I've been on nine in total. And because it was my first one, because it was at scale, because it was going to war, it'll always stay with me. I'd love to pass on lots of advice to, you know, young Glenn Hortons that are joining now. Um, I tell them to read because I never did um, and I wish I had. 
I tell them to do everything they can to look after their mental and physical fitness and resilience. Um, I tell them not to rush, uh, to take their time, to don't try and get anywhere too quick, just build experience. And I tell them to research what they want to join, what they want to go into, uh, and perhaps utilize the talents, their personal talents they've got. But most importantly, choose to do something that you know you'll enjoy.